This is a teardown of an Airport Extreme model A1034. On the bottom, there's three exposed Torx head screws. These are T8 screws. Also, these aren't uh, machine screws. These are uh, coarse threaded screws for plastic. This just splits in half and shows you the inner shell, which I believe, yeah, it's mounted down. There's two Phillips head screws holding the antenna array on. And the antenna array is plugged into the Airport Extreme card through the whatever that connector would be, I guess like a coax connector. Right there. Something is holding this together. Oh, there's a hidden screw. Or, yep, there we go. There's a hidden Phillips head screw under the label by the serial number. It should be loose now. There we go. And this is basically the uh, wireless router. On the bottom side of the can there's some more Phillips head screws that are holding the top and bottom pieces of aluminum together. There is an exposed connector on the bottom here. I'm not sure what that would be for maybe for factory testing or programming purposes, if they need to do stuff after it's assembled. The top lid does have some thermal transfer material, which makes contact with this heat sink, which is a fairly substantial heat sink. Inside, there's this Airport Extreme card, which is the same card they use in their laptops of this era, which is kind of neat. I used to salvage these for cheap wireless cards back when the uh, model number of laptops that use these were still relevant. I believe the Airport Extreme cards were used in iBook G5s. Alright, there's some screws on the heatsink. Appears to be held on with some thermal transfer adhesive. This is a destructive teardown, so I actually didn't take that much force. It's a really nice piece of aluminum. Lots of work got put into that. Might have been extruded this way, I'm not sure. Yeah, they probably extruded it. That probably would have been easier. And then machine these holes later. Looks like the processor is an AMD processor of some sort. Let's see if I can get a good zoom on that. Uh, yeah, I can't get it to show up good in the camera. It's an AMD AU1500-333. MBC. There's some Broadcom chips on here, which are presumably for the two network ports memory for the processor and that should be the flash for the operating system. A couple more screws holding the board down. Oops, I should try to zoom back out. There we go.
longer screws than I thought they would be. The top of the unit's making a nice screw holder for me. There we go. One more screw. It's kind of rare to work on something Apple and have it actually be easy to take apart. <laughs> And it looks like one of the screws wasn't necessary. It was the other end of the standoff that was holding this down to the bottom. But there's not much to see in the bottom anyways. Looks like there's a connector there for something additional. I don't remember if these supported like a modem for DSL. I don't believe they did, but it's been a while since I've messed with one of these. Not too much to see in the bottom. Got some power supply stuff there, some passives for the processor and memory. Not sure what these crystals are for. They must be something related to the, uh, that one's about where the processor is. And these two you know, are right under the Broadcom trips. So might have something to do with that. But yeah, kind of neat. Kind of a odd design. For, especially for its time, because a lot of this stuff was basically just a board inside of a plastic housing. So I'm not sure what the reasoning behind the uh, aluminum can is. The heat sink even is, I will admit, it's a lot more substantial than you see in this level of networking equipment. So these things must have been more powerful than um, a traditional wireless router would have been. But thanks for watching.